So here's the deal. The Philadelphia DA made a statement. This was uh, on election day or before day before election day. And he says, look, anybody that comes to these polls that thinks they're going to intimidate the election workers, if you're thinking you're going to wreak uh, mayhem and destruction, this is what he says. And I quote him. He says, Philadelphia, we got plenty of handcuffs for you. We got plenty of police officers for you. We got plenty of jail space for you. If you think you're going to come and mess around on what's going on on election day, then he says, F around and find out. He said, F around and find out. But we're going to play, we're going to play the clip. I believe we have the clip here. Tomorrow to go vote if they have not voted already, that everybody in this city is working and has been working for months to make sure that there will be nothing tough about that experience and nothing to fear in that experience. But I also want to be clear, anybody who thinks it's time to play militia, F around and find out. Wow. Anybody who thinks it's time to insult, to deride, to mistreat, to threaten people, F around and find out. We do have the cuffs, we do have the jail cells, we do have the Philly juries, and we have the state prisons. So if you're going to try to turn an election into some form of coercion, if you're going to try to bully people, bully votes or voters, you're going to try to erase votes, you're going to try any of that nonsense, we're not playing. F around and find out. Wow. We are in a position where uh, we cannot forget the reality of what occurred on January 6th. We cannot forget the reality that there is controversy about elections in the United States. And we cannot forget the reality that it is our job to make sure in a nonpartisan way that every vote is counted. We do not care. I am now wearing my nonpartisan hat. I wear two, but this is my nonpartisan hat. We do not care who gets your vote. We care that you get two votes. Wow, that's good. So, you know, while I'm looking at this, all of a sudden, I'm thinking, Pastor Martino, of Nehemiah. Mm. Right. Because the Philadelphia DA, of course, he, you know, used some spicy language, but basically he's saying this is what's happening. The election is happening. And for all of you who think you're going to come in here and wreak mayhem, destruction, what do you say? Insult, intimidate, deride. Let me tell you something. Wow. I got something for you. Mess around and find out. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is really what Nehemiah was saying. If you guys are not familiar with it, it's Nehemiah chapter six, verse three. Nehemiah had a, a call from God to do a specific work, right? And in the midst of him doing that work, people were trying to intimidate him to stop. They were insult they were doing everything that the Philadelphia DA just said. They insulted him. Wow. And what did Nehemiah say? He says to, to the people, he didn't say F around and find out, <laughs> but he said, <laughs> he said, I am doing a great work. He says, I'm doing a great work and I cannot come down to see what you're talking about. My so God. this is this is something I just wanted to share. And if you got a call from God to do something, whatever it is, you're going to have people sent by the enemy, may even be in your own family. People are going to come. They may put their mouth on what you're trying to do. What are you trying to open up that business for? What are you trying to start with? What makes you think you can write a book? Whatever. You wow. got to say within yourself to the to the spirits that come against you mess around and find out if you try to stop me you can't mm. what you got to say about that listen and that this is so good because again we see uh one of the major threats of the enemy called bullying here uh, these were a bunch of bullies and um and again it was bullying taking place at the polls potentially but but notice though what we appreciate about the da is that he he dealt with it up front and see, that that's always the key with dealing with anything that you're going through. Anybody that's trying to come up against you, even if you think that, because even in verse number two, the Bible says in Nehemiah 6 and 2, that Sam Balagashem sent unto me saying, come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of, oh, no. But they thought to do me mischief. He knew mm -hmm. through discernment that they already had a plan. It was mischievous. And they were mischievous in and of themselves to try to come up against him. And so he had a response. He had he had a statement that he was going to make up front, like the DA, to shut down any attempt of the enemy to come up against him. And see, that's what you're being led to share. 
whenever God gives you a vision, whenever God has a plan for your life, speak out now. Speak up front. Attack it at the beginning. Do not let the fly, do not let the bug inside you peep through the hole. Make sure you know who it is, the voice behind what's ever being shared, and then deal with it. According, matter of fact, Tracy, verse 4 says, they sent unto me four times after this sort. That's bullying. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to bully Nehemiah just as individuals are going to try to bully at the polls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever, put in the chat if you've ever had... <laughs> Put in the chat if you've ever had any anybody try to stop you from what you know God has called you to do. My God. And, and, and you know what? That that can even go to yourself. Hell, oh, and see, that's, we are our worst enemy. Hey, Tracy, we're going to make folk laugh. There, notice it was a different way. I thank God for taking us to the, uh, to the scriptures, right? Because we didn't have to say F around. See, it, it's right here in scripture. Because, again, you know, if God be for me, you can't even be against me. So there's another way in which now as a Christian, I can say that without being an Adam when I would have said it the way that he said. It. But see, he was kind. And I thank God for that because, again, he, he understood that much. And our question to everybody, have you ever been bullied like this? Because, see, that bullying is so real right now in the earth realm that, once again, not only do we get bullied, our wives, our husbands, our sons, our daughters, they get bullied at school. They get bullied in the mall, on the bus. Somebody is being bullied right now as we speak. But we want to let you know in Jesus' name that once again, they're going to mess around with you and find out who God really is in Jesus' name. That's good stuff you're sharing. That's good, 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 good stuff you're sharing because bullies are out there. Bullies are out there. But one thing that I do appreciate about the Philadelphia DA is his boldness. Yes. Wow. You bold enough to come to me, or well, I'm bold enough to answer you back. <laughs> I mean, you look. You look at him. I mean, he. He. And of course, look behind him to uh, to his right and directly behind him. So he, he's well protected. He's being <laughs> kept. But can we share this with everybody? As a believer, you don't see those that are protecting me and so much so that since you remember how in second Kings chapter number six, Elisha had to pray that the eyes of his servant could open up and see, because here it is the same type of intimidation was going on. There were horses and chariots all around him. And then the next thing you know, he got scared and he talks to Elisha and says, master, you know, what are, what are we going to do in other words? And he's like, man, Lord, open up his eyes so that they can clearly see who's protecting us. We have ministering angels in the spirit realm that are protecting us like he has those around him protecting him. That's why we should never be intimidated. And that's why we should never be fearful. And that's why we should never worry. My God, my God. Yeah. I don't know. what It's in Proverbs. It says... Uh... The righteous are bold as a lion. Yes, the righteous are as bold as a lion. I speak Ooh. that word myself every day. The word says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Therefore, I am bold as a lion. Mess with me if you think you're going to keep me from my destiny. That's the attitude that we have to have. Now is not the time to be timid. My God. My God. About anything. Romans 28 and 1, dear. The wicked flee when no man pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion, or maybe in your case, a lion that's 30 years young. A lion that's... <laughs> mm -hmm. Geraldine said spiritual Geraldine said spiritual bullies are cowards. Ooh. Wow. Wow. I yes, like that. Yes, they are. Wow. But so are natural, because the natural bullies are really... I mean, speaking of that, I mean, Tracy, there's so much going on with our our students in the colleges, how they're trying to bully these kids, trying to generate a spirit of fear. Man, we don't have time for that. And again, that's why this is so very important. This message that God is sending through you right now. Don't be intimidated at the polls. Don't be intimidated in the mall. Don't be intimidated at the restaurant. Don't be intimidated in the grocery store. Whatever you do, don't be intimidated on your job. Don't be intimidated. There's no reason. Yeah. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. John 4 I was getting ready to quote that scripture. You took it. You snatched it right out of my mouth. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Exactly. Exactly. 